Hi friends, welcome to Timing Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to split a time interval using the pandas date range function. You know you can split a time interval using for loop also, but hey, pandas provides you a very convenient function called date range, and using that you can actually split a time interval into multiple time intervals based upon your requirement. So here I'm going to show you two methods how you can split a time interval using the pandas date range function. The first method is splitting an interval based upon your time bucket. So it is something like I have 20 days and if I want to split it by day, that means I want my resultant array to be day by day. Suppose if I, if I have dates like 1st January, say 20 January, and I want my resultant output should be 1st January, 2nd January, 3rd January, so something like that. So use the frequency input of this pd.atrange function. And the next option is basically splitting the time interval into a fixed number of bins, something like uh, you have 20 days and you want to split it into 15 parts or you want to split it into 5 parts. So how can you do that? You just give the parameter called periods and you mention how many buckets that time period should be divided into. And it's that simple, it's just a single one-liner and using that you can elegantly split your time range conveniently. Alright, so let's try to take a demo of this. I'm going to take a blank folder, I'm going to open it with PS code. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to just name it index.py and here I'm going to import the main uh, library which is the pandas so i'll write import pandas as pd so i've imported the pandas for my example i need a start date and an end date and i want to split it right so to use date times i will import the date time module so i'll write import date time as dt so let me try to create a start and end times now i'll just write start dt is equal to dt dot date time of so let me try to write 1st January 2021 so I'm gonna just write 2021 1 and 1 this is the you know year month and date so if you want to learn about date time model I've created a video of it so you can take a look at it before watching this and now I'm going to create the end time I'm write ndt equal to dt dot date time of uh, let me take 20th January so let's write 2021 January and 20 so I've got my start date and end date. So suppose if I want to split this time period into dates which are one day apart. So now my frequency is basically one day, right? So if I want to do that, I'll just write, I'll let resultant dates equal to PD dot date range. And here I'm going to give the start date and I'm going to give the end date. And I'm going to say frequency equal to so if you want to split it by a single day, I'll just write frequency equal to D. That means I will split this time interval by a day. That means I will get the resultant output with each day as the output. So let me try to print this. I'll just write print of resultant dates. So now my output dates will be spaced by one day. So let me try to save it and run this. So you can see I've got the output as a date time index. So here the thing you need to note is pd.rate range will give you the output of a date time index. So if you want to convert into a simple array, you just can use a very simple function called to list. So basically it converts this index as a uh, list in Python. So I'll just run this again. So here you can see I've got an array of timestamps now. And you can see the first timestamp is the first January, second time is the second January and so on. So if you want to split this time range as suppose three days apart, each item should be three days apart. I'll just write frequency equal to 3d that means each timestamp will be three days apart so i'll just write pd.date range start date end date and frequency is three days and if i just run this you got your output three days space you can see one four seven and you know each timestamp will be three days apart you can even achieve this behavior using a for loop but hey this is very simple you can use pd.date range and you just mention the frequency there may be a case where your frequency is not easily expressible or you just don't want to remember this convention but you don't need to remember this convention if you use the time deltas so if i just write if i want the spacing to be three days i can just write dt dot time delta and i'll write days equal to three that means i'm mentioning the frequency in terms of time delta so i don't need to remember any string formats to mention the frequency you just can give a plain old time delta so if i just run this you can see i've got the same desired effect by using the time delta and now since you can use the time delta you can give whatever the time period you want to have as a frequency i'll just write days equal to three and I'll just write hours equal to randomly i just want five hours so i just want each time stamp to be spaced as three days five hours so let's run this you can see my first timestamp is zero zero hours and second timestamp is the fourth day five hours so because I've specified the time period of the frequency as three days, five hours. So it's really useful if you don't want to remember the frequency 
string convention yeah so that's it about using the pd dot date range to split the time periods so now the next requirement would be you want to have a time interval split into fixed number of time intervals so the further you just can give an input called periods equal to 15 or some periods equal to 20 or whatever the number you want so let me try to experiment that here i'll just write start date end date and instead of frequency input parameter i'll just write periods so periods equal to 20 so that means i want to split my input time range between start date and end date and i want to split it as 20 periods so if i just run this you can see the output timestamps i've got is 20 so that means i got a start timestamp and end timestamp and i'm splitting it into 20 timestamps so that's why i got first january i got 20 items in this list so if you want to split this as suppose i want to split it as 15 timestamps i'll just write period equal to 15 that means i want this time range to be split into 15 timestamps. So if I save this and run this, you can see I've got 15 timestamps and you can see each timestamp is, you know, some weird seconds and milliseconds because you are split into 15 timestamps. So the same way you can split it in as many timestamps you want and just specify the periods equal to 15. This may be handy in some use cases where you want to split the time into fixed number of bins. All right, that's it guys. Using the frequency input and using the periods input, you can conveniently split your time range into multiple time intervals. And hey, once you have split your time range, you can iterate over each timestamp. So suppose if you want to iterate over each timestamp, I'll just write for timestamp in the resultant dates or resultant timestamp, you can name it like that. I'll just write print of TS. So what I'm doing is after splitting the date range, I'm actually iterating over the each timestamp. So if I just run this, you can see now I've iterated over each timestamp. That means I can easily run a for loop over a time period. So generally you can run a for loop over numbers using range of 0 to 10 or range of 1 to 100, something like that. But that's not as easy in case of timestamps. But PD dot date range can solve your problem that way. So suppose if you want to iterate over start date and end date for each day. So I'll just write per TS in PD dot date range of start date and end date and frequency equal to each day. So now using just one line, I'm able to iterate over a time period with my desired frequency in a for loop. And your code will look more clean if you use the pd.dateRange to iterate over time intervals. So if I just run this and see, you can see I've easily iterated over a time interval using the pd.dateRange in a for loop. And without this, it would be difficult, like you have to use an iterator and you have to add the timestamp, time delta to the start date and so on. But this will remove most of the hazard since you are using the pd.8 range function to split your timestamp in the for loop. You can see I have created a blog post on splitting a time interval using pd.8 range function. I have even given you the source code so that you can copy paste in your own PC and practice it for yourself. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.